Hello, this is uh, Peter Stanford, uh, VK4GXC, uh, once again with a, another one of the uh, valve radios from the, the 1950s-60s. Uh, this particular set is an RCA, SRR15A, uh, an early 15A. It uh, has been completely restored. Um, all the valves, there's some 20, uh, 28 valves in this, have been uh, replaced. Um, the valves are wired in type valves and they require a little bit of effort to remove, but um, surprisingly it's it's not as tough as it might seem. The uh, the valves are in little modules with turret tags which require just a bit of desoldering and winding and then new valves to be uh, placed in again. Um, new valves are readily available and uh, not that expensive. So it's been revalved, it's been realigned and is now performing uh, as it should do. In fact I, I, I do think it's a little bit more sensitive than it originally was uh, uh, Spectre uh, is performing. Um, I did put it on the uh, signal generators and the signal noise ratio meters, and it uh, it does perform very well indeed. Um, comes in for a lot of criticism from some of the uh, the operators at the time. Um, frequency stability being an issue in terms of its uh, its microphonic. Um, however, I've uh, I've used this the last uh, three weeks and found it to be extremely uh, extremely ergonomic. Um, I actually really like using it as a as a desktop set. It, it, it's it's got reasonable uh, tuning rate. Um, has incredible long term stability when it's left alone. Um, I've had this on uh, facsimile reception over a twelve hour period without it uh, without it drifting. So uh, you know I, I I do sense there was a lot of effort made to make this as stable as possible. But um, generically, it does seem to uh, have a problem with um, uh, have a bit of movement on the desk. It does it does change its uh, its frequency. However, I'll, I'll go through the radio and uh, explain a few of its functions. It's uh, basically a five-band model. goes from 2 MHz to 32 MHz. Um, the resolution is dependent upon the band, um, and it has an unusual uh, backlit uh, translucent screen display, which I'll, I'll zoom in on to uh, shortly, and I'll give it more of a, an explanatory note on that. The, uh, the thing is completely modular. Various sections can be pulled out. Um, we have both a what was called a tuning meter, which is fundamentally a very high Q circuit centered in the middle of the passband. Um, so you actually can tune to the center of the, of, of the signal. Um, and also an output meter here, which, uh, which measures the audio output from the other line output of the receiver. Um, all the other aspects of the receiver, it's quite a, a very straightforward, simple receiver to use. And uh, currently I have it hooked up, as usual, to a, an external amplifier. And I'll just turn the noise level up a little bit in the background so you can hear where we're going to. Um, it's the middle of the day, so we probably won't get too much reception. But I will uh, try some of the broadcast stations. And in particular, we can have a look at um, the New Zealand radio station, which is one of my favourites. Now, we're currently on the 8 to 16 megahertz band. So we need to tune up to the upper end of that band. As you can see, it's weavering around because of the uh, <laughs> because of the shock absorbers I've got on the base, which are a little bit a little bit soft, to be honest. But um, they do elevate it to the right right height for tuning around. So we'll move up to the end of the 15 megahertz band, and in essence, what you have is a 200 kilohertz uh, reference oscillator here. And we'll just go a little bit further. Uh, we'll go around about 15.8. Switch it on. And I don't know if you can hear in the background, there's a, an audible heterodyne beat, which beats with, the, um, beats with the onboard crystal reference. And basically zero beat that. You adjust a pointer on the screen to be centered. And then uh, you go back to receive. And as long as you're within the, the, the nearest 200 kilohertz marking, you should get good, um, good results. We'll strip, set it to AM wide. And here we go. And as you can see over here, as you tune in the receiver, you can actually z zero it on the main signal. So that, so that ensures that you're actually on the center of the AM passband. As you can hear in the background, the audio is quite, uh, quite good fidelity. The, there is a narrow version. Slightly narrower, I believe you're really looking at about 8 kilohertz here and somewhere around about 3 in this position. So, again, you can hear the, uh, the audio quality. There is an antenna slight adjust here because we're running off a 50 ohm system, it's uh, and it's, it's completely 50 ohm broadband, you won't see a lot of effect on the antenna. There's a RF IF gain control here which works in the 
non-AGC selection. You don't have control over the AGC in this particular variant, and uh, it really only is uh, allowed to be adjusted in, in the CW band. So if you go into the CW mode, you can pull back the gain. As I mentioned, it's quite a lot of gain on this particular radio. And you can hear the uh, zero beat for CW purposes. I'll just go back to the, uh, the AM setting. So for normal operation under, under AM, which was the, the popular mode of operation when this was out, um, you tune in with the tuning meter, you have the audio output meter here, you can show kicking over there if you wanted to see the audio output level. The modes it receives on, on, on the front panel here, um, AA, <coughs> excuse me, A1 broad, A1 sharp, these are basically the CW modes for wide and narrowband CW. There's an A2, which is a, uh, it's actually the, the, the slightly narrower AM, which is a 3 kilohertz band, and uh, it, uh, in the A2 position, is inhibiting the, uh, the, uh, the AGC. And then all these three bands here are AGC. Now, there is actually a product detector in this, and it calls the, uh, the last selection here an FSK selection. And I'll see if we can get some, uh, something running to, uh, to identify sure what the FSK sounds like on this. So I'll just... Okay, so here's looking at the uh, main tuning screen. I, I couldn't find much CW there to, to demonstrate, but what I will show you is the WWV uh, reception today at lunchtime. As you can see, the main tuning screen moves around here, and uh, we have a, an adjustment, which is indicated from a from a mirrored, um, how can I put it, main dial screen. In fact, the main dial screen is a big, uh, is a large glass dial, which is backlit, and then is uh, displayed and presented through via mirror to the front um, translucent screen here. So what we'll do is we'll just um, kick in the we'll kick in the calibrator, we'll go to 15 megahertz and if I can uh, view it through the camera right so we hear the zero beat in the background I'll just turn that up a little bit more so you can hear it In fact, I'll just switch the mode around to press K there, so we can hear the beat a little bit louder, and uh, we'll align it to be zeroed. Then there's a mechanical adjustment here, which is the Cal Adjust, which allows you to adjust the back. It's a little bit different to some of the other receivers at the time, but you're actually uh, adjusting the, you're actually pulling and pushing the uh, the actual dial assembly. Okay, so we've sent it on 15, we'll turn it off, and uh, as we can hear in the background, the meters are now indicating uh, a, output there. Uh, a near centered view here on the tuning meter, and the, um, the actual actual audio output, 15 megs. And if we narrow the, um, back to AM, narrow it down. Again, the meter should still be sitting there quite comfortably. And you can hear the, the unmistakable beat there of WWV. I'll just have a little bit of a... Uh, basically on tune. Uh, the lower scale here is primarily just a, a logging scale. Um, so you can record and, and come back at any time to a, a logged scale. The surprising, surprising scale on the top here, the... Uh, the resolution is, is pretty good. Um, you can get to within sort of 5 kilohertz basically across the whole of the band, which was a lot better than a lot of the other sets at the time, um, except perhaps the R390, which was coming out about the same time as this particular receiver. But as we uh, drop down through the bands, you can see how you get uh, a little bit more a little bit more resolution. And we'll drop down to the bottom band. That's actually the main there. So... And again, we'll just uh, tune into Radio New Zealand, and I'll give a bit of a, a close view of the rest of the unit. So, once again, we'll we'll switch into the calibrator. We'll tune to the nearest nearest section, if I can something close. Oh, there is. And I'll just turn the audio up a bit so we can hear it. Now that is supposed to be centered on uh, 15.8. You can see. And there's even a little chevron there on the 15.8, which you meant to align up to. So we'll just pull mechanically the alignment up. And as you see, it's that's quite close enough there. Um, we now go back to normal receive. And we know we should be down about 17, uh, 
15 at 720. And, uh, and what we do for the last few minutes is just tune into the, um, the sentiment there. So there we go. And uh, so we have one last pan around here. We've got the frequency now of 15.7. In fact, it's showing just about under 20, but it's, uh, it's plus or minus a couple of kilohertz, I'd say. The logging scale. The controls for all the frequencies arrangement. There's even a uh, spare normal bulb position here. This allows you to switch between two bulbs. It's a right-hand bulb on the spare. And back to the original. Unfortunately, it's lost a lot. There we go. There's a frequency vernier here for, allow for adjusting the BFO. And uh, again, we can actually change the sensitivity here. This is a sprung loaded to low sensitivity, which gives you a bit more uh, uh, sensitivity to the, uh, the tuning arrangement. Of course, the usual audio, output meter selection, uh, the main output audio adjustment. And down here, there's something called a silencer, which is actually the fundamentally a squelch circuit. And I, uh, I'll just give you a quick indication how that runs. So we can turn the volume up. We will off-tune a bit. And we can turn the silencer up until it, you know, there we go, it cuts off the noise. And then as we tune back into 15.7, up she comes. So there you go, there's a nice form there. There's a monitor port. There's two of them. Monitor adjust. There's the main uh, AC input. Power. There's standby for transmit. Operate. Um, and on the later versions, this arrangement here is all changed around um, to allow AGC. And the main RF gain control. So it's it's quite a, a limited amount of control. But uh, as we zoom back, there we are, the SRR 13 receiver, as made by RCA and used by the uh, American uh, States Navy.